Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. You know, my doctor told me, Scott, you really need to start eating more fried foods. At least that's the way I understood it. <laughs> so with that in mind, my wife got me this. It's a T-Fowl Ultimate Easy Clean Semi-Pro Fryer. Now this is not an unboxing video. I've actually had this thing several months and have been using it very heavily. So today I think we'll do three things. One, I'm going to give you an overview of the fryer itself and some of its features. Two, we're going to cook some of the best effing french fries you've ever seen in your entire life. And three, we're going to demonstrate the cleanup, filtration, and oil storage capabilities of the machine once we're all done. Okay, one thing you'll notice about the fryer is that everything stores inside the unit. Inside you've got the power cord and the basket. The basket has a handle that folds over, got your fry basket. And this here is the uh, heating element. It comes in and out. And here is the actual frying container where the oil goes in. Inside the pan here, you'll see a maximum and minimum fill lines. You want to fill your oil up to there. Now on the front of the machine, there's a lever. It has three settings. The setting here in the middle is called fry. That's your main setting. This is where you will cook all your food. Now after you're done cooking your food and allow the machine to cool down to room temperature, what you do is take the lever and twist it to the right to automatic oil filtration. This will allow all the oil that's in the hopper to flow down through a filter and be captured for storage in this plastic oil box. After your oil has filtered through, you can take the lever and turn it all the way to the left to oil box. You remove the plastic storage container and see all of your filtered oil ready for the next time you want to cook. And it stores right here in the machine. Now let's talk for a minute about temperature control. The t has an easy to use dial. You just turn it to whatever temperature you want. Now previously when I would fry, I would use this, the Dutch oven with a thermometer, which sounds great, but it's, sometimes I had trouble with the fries overflowing. I never knew exactly how much to put in there. And also with a gas stove, it was very difficult to adjust the temperature correctly. So if a recipe said, fry something at 325 degrees, I feel like I was always fiddling with the gas control on the stove, trying to get an exact 325 degrees. Whereas with the T-Fowl, all I would do is put it right there, and you're done. Okay, now here's one of the best tips I can give you. I learned this the hard way. The first time I used my fryer, I used it right here on the countertop. Uh, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this uh, kitchen has very tall ceilings. And what I came to realize is that fries put out a lot of steam and grease into the air. So using it right here on the countertop, all of that just went right up into the room. And if you do that over and over, over time, you're really going to create a mess on your walls. So the method I came up with to mitigate against that is to take a cookie sheet, put the fryer on the cookie sheet, and put the fryer on my stove. And by doing this, I can fry right here, and all the grease and steam go right up my existing vent hood. Okay, now it's time to make the actual fries. For a good fry, you need a good potato. And then with four of them, we're going to end up with about two pounds, more or less, of cut fries to go into the fryer. I'm going to give these my patented quick wash and peel method. Okay, now we have four washed and peeled potatoes. These are ready to cut up and turn into french fries. Right here, I have a bowl that's half filled with water. Once we cut the potatoes, we're going to put the fries into the water and let them soak for at least half an hour. Now, if little things bother you and you don't like sloppy fries, what you can do is take your knife and kind of flatten the sides of your potatoes. See how flat that is? 
do it to all four sides. And then when you cut your fry, you will have very nice, relatively square edges. Okay, so now we have our four potatoes cut up and immersed in our bowl of water. These need to sit at least 20, 30 minutes. Uh, you can let them sit a lot longer if you want to. One good thing about it is once they're in the water, the potatoes won't turn brown even though they're already cut up. The water is also going to draw some starch out. Okay, our fries have had a good long soak. Now they're ready to be cooked. So the next steps are to drain them through a colander, rinse them under cold water, and then dry them off. You can use kitchen towels to dry them, or what I like to do is use about 9 million paper towels. They work well and it really drives my wife crazy. Look at all that starch that's come out of the potatoes. It's a white film on the bottom. So the next thing you want to do is rinse any remaining starch off. Finally give them a good dry. Again, I like to use paper towels because they're wasteful and bad for the planet. What's going to really help these fries crunch up and give us a nice crispy chew to them is cornstarch. What you want to do, take a good solid spoonful of cornstarch and sprinkle it in. Then just toss the fries around. You're not really trying to create a batter, you just want to give a little cornstarch to So now our fries are ready to go. I think we're ready to cook. Place the screw cap. Slide it back under the machine and switch the lever to fry. Now we're ready to cook. Now you know stoners and lazy moms can take a bag of frozen fries and pop them in the oven. Anybody can do that. We're not doing that. We want fantastic fries. We want good homemade steak fries. We want fries that are so good they'd make a Frenchman want to slap his own mama. And the way we're going to do that is cook them twice. It's very important to cook them twice. We're gonna cook them once at a lower temperature, 325 degrees. We're gonna take them out, let them drain a little bit. We're gonna increase the temperature of the oil up to 375 degrees, and then cook them a second time. Now after the first frying at 325 degrees, the fries are not done. You're gonna pick one up, it's gonna be soggy and limp and not golden brown. You're gonna think, what the hell, I should've just had tots. No, no, no. We're not done yet. Then we're going to turn the dial up to 375 degrees. We're going to let the oil heat up. Once it's heated, we're going to put the fries back in. Another six minutes or so, you'll have to keep an eye on them and watch them pretty closely. And once they've achieved that perfect golden brown outer color, you'll know they're done. Okay, so here we go. I set the gauge to 325 and turn it on. You'll notice an orange light on top of the machine. Once that light goes out, you know the oil has come up to temperature. And here we go. Now at first, these fries might as well be little bitty ice cubes going into the oil. The oil temperature will drop. The automatic thermostat will bring it right back up. Let's take a quick peek. Woo! I'm going to use this as my video resume when I fly at McDonald's. Alright, so that has been six minutes. Let's take a look. Now notice they are not golden brown yet. They're very hot. 
but they're not quite done. That's what we want. Now, while these are resting, we're going to turn the oil temperature up to 375. The light comes back on, letting us know that it's still heating up. We wait. Even though they're not done, I kind of like to eat one anyway. Yeah. Okay, now the oil has come back up to temperature. Got the fries back in the basket. We're going to put them in for the second fry. Look at them go. Now's where you really want to have this thing on your stove top underneath your vent tray. Look at all that steam coming out. If that weren't going right up the vent hood, it would be going out right into the room. Now here's where you've got to really be careful and keep an eye on your fries. Check them every minute or so. Because if you let them go too long, they're going to burn. Whenever they've reached the level of doneness you like, as far as crunch and color, take them on out. And here you have them, the best home fries you'd ever want to eat. Serve them up with salt and pepper and ketchup. But for you Utah like me, a little Utah fry sauce. Mm. Now the oil we used to cook the fries is still in the hopper here. Once you've allowed the machine to cool, what you want to do is take this lever and turn it to the right, to the automatic oil filtration setting. Now the oil is going to drain through the filter and be captured in this oil storage box. Okay, it's been a good 20 minutes or so. That should be about enough time for our oil to have flown down through the filter, filtered out all the particles, and be captured in the storage box. Once you're done filtering, what you want to do is turn the lever back up to fry, then turn it over to oil box. You can see that all the oil we use for frying is now captured, clean, and stored in the oil storage box. It'll be ready to go for the next time we want to fry something. Now we can remove the lid. Remove the heating element, just give that a quick wash. And in the bottom of the hopper, you can see all the particles that were filtered out from our cooking oil. You can just pop the hopper out, give that a quick wash in your sink or dishwasher, put it back in, and you're ready to go for next time. Well, that about wraps her up for this episode of Uncle Scott's Kitchen. I really like this fryer, the Tefal Ultimate Easy Clean Semi-Pro Fryer. I like the temperature controls, very precise. I like the oil filtration and storage capabilities. And most importantly, it makes excellent french fries. Now, if you'd like to get more information on the fryer or the recipe for that delicious Utah fry sauce, please visit the website at unclescottskitchen.com. And finally, I'd like to ask for a big favor. If you've enjoyed today's video, please click the subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy today's video, please click the subscribe button anyway.